Another Shiite protest occurred earlier today in Abuja, and it has been reported that a schoolgirl has been shot dead, and two journalists have been arrested. What is the sect protesting for now? Again, also, why do the police have to respond violently always to protests? Well, joining me to discuss this, I have in the studio Gochuku Ikeaka. He is a political analyst. It's good to have you join us, Ugo. Thank you. So we're looking at the situation that took place in Abuja today, a protest. Shiites are protesting, and of course, we're all wondering why they're protesting again. But of course, it was not just a protest because somebody lost her life. A child, a schoolgirl, who left home telling her parents that she was going to school, I'll see you later, lost her life. But I was asking a question before we went on that big. Why do we always have trigger-happy police officers when we're having protests, where you know that you could have a stray bullet and somebody could get hurt? I mean, whatever happened to protests, kids? Well, I, I, think, I think partly the reason why we're witnessing this thing again, uh, having an issue, because it's not the first time it's happening. A uh, couple of couple of months back, we saw when uh, when a, a young journalist that works with one popular TV station in Lagos was killed because of a similar issue. So, uh, for me, I think the reason why we keep witnessing this this uh, this sad incident is because the police, who it is a primary cost, uh, duty to protect people and make sure that lives and properties are secure daily, uh, even in, even during the times of demonstration, they will have happy trigger policemen. You know, going around shooting people during protests, uh, which is a civil protest, because for me, I think uh, the police themselves have the backing of the state, all right? Because we've not heard anything about the guy, the, the police, the policeman that shot uh, the journalist, the young journalist, couple of couple of months back. So it is happening. It is continuing to happen. It will continue to happen again. It's a sad thing. But why it will continue to happen again? Because uh, the police department itself and the federal government, let's say maybe the office of the AG and the rest of them, are here to come you know, together to say, okay, whoever does this thing will be penalized. Whoever goes out of his way to do this thing will be penalized. All right. If people uh, do, they have to say that we have laws. If you kill a person, extrajudicial killings yeah. are a crime, it, it, whether it, we it, like it, it or it not. Crime, and we yeah. talked about this a few weeks, a few days ago. Yeah. Extrajudicial killings are wrong, and the, the Constitution has a place for it. I mean, I don't understand. We should not be debating. We don't need the Attorney General to come in on it. Yeah, you, if we have a country where laws work. But sadly, sadly that, that, the opposite happens here. All right, that's why it's good child that, that just went to school or went somewhere that is going back home after 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 a, a hard day in school because the, this same child is studying in a, in a, in a classroom where not, not like uh, you have the best facilities and the rest of them to study. So after all those mental stress and the rest of them, this child is going home and at the end of the day is a victim of uh, uh, a policeman's inability to do the right thing. So and it is sad and it's a sad development for our country and it shows that we don't value life here. I was talking to some some couple of friends a few days back. I said in some countries, cat and dogs have more rights than human beings in Nigeria. And uh, I, I, I kind of understand why some people will leave their home, homeland, leave their country, you know, approve themselves and go to a stranger and face the code. Because at the end of the day, even cats and animals in that place have more rights. And PETA will come out to defend you, even as an animal. But who defends you here in this country? Nobody. So it is a certain, and this will, this will continue to happen until the state itself free uh, exactly, exactly. Because this whole thing, for me, is, is, a, is a political move. All right? If this guy has done something wrong that is against the Constitution, let the state try him. Let, let an independent judiciary do their work. And if he's found guilty for anything, he should be sent to jail. Uh, he, he should be sent to jail. His people, hopefully, will abide by court rules. But we've not seen that so far. So uh, the state refusal to free this guy unconditionally as people uh, has demanded over the past few months, has emboldened them to go out to keep protesting. Because even in the face of death, even in the face of police intimidation, even in the face of state intimidation, uh, using the machinery of the, the instrumentality of the state, the DSS, the police, to intimidate these guys, they are not, they are not, they are, they are yet to yield. They are still maintaining, they are still standing on the same thing they've said over the last couple of months, over the last couple of days, over the last couple of weeks. So, uh, the, 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 the shares are not the people that you, 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 you're going to push away, that they're not easy to push away. So, what is going to happen is that, for me, I think it is the right time for the state, the federal government, uh, the presidency, and the rest of them to show leadership. And the best way to show leadership is to understand what is the issue at this point. Uh, can we free this guy so that peace can return to Abuja, our capital, our capital uh, uh, city? So because what is happening makes Abuja, 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 Abuja is becoming more pro security than the rest of them. So it, it doesn't help anybody. But for me, the right thing that they will do it at this point, I don't think they want to do it yet. They, 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 they are not convinced, and there's nothing that is compelling them to do the right thing. And that is why people keep dying. What do you mean by 
there's nothing compelling them to do that. We have a constitution, we yeah. have a law, we have a judiciary. I mean, uh, Laws are meant to be abided by. Yeah, I, I so when you say there's but nothing compelling them, I'm wondering, are we in a state of anarchy? Well, for, for me, I'm, I'm a political analyst, all right? So I, I interpret things based on, based on the facts and based on the information that I see and information I have. I'm not a lawyer, all right? And for me, like I said, uh, there is nothing that's compelling Are them. you insinuating that the government of the day is blatantly refusing to abide no, the, the, by the rules the government, of, the government of, of the, the rule The government of, law. of the day is blatantly refusing to, obey, uh, to abide by the rules of, rules of law. It's not the first thing. It's not the, I'm not the first person saying it in this country at the moment. Uh, if, 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 if things are right, if, if they're obeying the, 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 uh, the, the precept of the court, if they're obeying what the court has said so far, uh, Shawere will be in his house in Lagos or in Abuja resting with his family. Uh, maybe trying to watch football at the time in the evening, but he can't do that. You know why? Because we have a, we have a group of people that feel that the constitution is not for them, and they're in Abuja. And the same thing that is happening to to El Zaki is same thing that is happening to Shawere because a group of people that have decided that they want to preside over the country uh, with a total disregard for, for for the law itself is not going to help anybody. So what we're going what we're going to continue to see is a state of anarchy, especially in this in this in this region in these zones where we're having issues. You continue to see the lawlessness. You continue to see police and the, the, uh, the, the, shy, uh, the shy clashing a couple of times. And, and the sad part is that people will continue to lose their life. The last time I came here, I said the same thing. And sometimes it looks like my prophet of doom. I'm not a prophet of doom. But the thing is that I say things based on the information and the facts that I have. And I, I, I'm, I'm not a hope merchant. Hope is not a strategy. So if I come in and say this is what is going to happen, and as it is now, like I said, there's nothing that is compelling them. Uh, it's not like the international community is putting pressure on them to act right. And also, back to Nigeria, the civil society in Nigeria is dead at the moment. They are not living up to their responsibilities. Uh, the opposition party, the PDP themselves, is a big failure. Right. You see, you see. Example: the governor of uh, Akwa Ibom State is jailing journalists. The governor of Cross River, Cross River, Cross River State is doing the same thing. So uh, there, is, there is nothing in the balance to tilt the equation to make to make them act right. The CSOs are not doing that. The uh, the, the opposition that's supposed to keep them in check are not doing that. Nigerians themselves are not concerned. Majority of them are hungry, so they're looking for food. So in at the end of the day. We're in a place, we're in a, we're in a state as a country that doesn't all go well for us because we can't continue with this trend because what this trend will bet us will be more violence, more police intimidation, more anarchy and more lawlessness. We we'll have to find a place, we we'll have to come to a place where we we'll start, if not for anything, for the interests of the country, for the development of the country to start respecting the constitution. If the constitution says do A, do A. If you can't do that as a country, we're not going to make any progress. Well, we'll take another short break because uh, this conversation is still ongoing, but we'll show you what a clip of some from people's phones, people who were recording past protests in Abuja. It seems like Abuja, like he said, has become a place where violence keeps breaking up. But let's give you some videos and when we come back, we'll still continue this conversation. Stay with us.
Thank you for staying with us. Uh, now, when we came back, uh, well, while we were having that conversation, we brought you some videos of the disturbance that Abuja is experiencing now. So I'm sure some of those videos were taken by people in their offices looking out through their windows. I'm imagining the state in which the FCT is in as a result of these protests. But my question is, these guys have been protesting over and over again. And we're yet to get a statement from the presidency or the government or whoever is holding Elza Zaki. Give us a detailed reason as to why he's being held in custody, what the procedure will be, and then we, the people, can understand why he's being held. Well, you're a lawyer. Maybe you can give us a fair understanding. Well, I have Ayo Ademilui, uh, he's a legal practitioner, joining us. Ayo, so maybe you could help us explain to us in layman terms what exactly is going on. Well, uh, if, you, if you look critically at uh, the development we have had in the uh, last few months, we have had a disturbing trend of uh, long compliance with valid and subsisting court orders uh, by nobody else but agencies of, uh, of government. In, in no particular order, we have uh, the cases of uh, Dasuki, and then um, we have the case of uh, Ezakizaki, and then the latest case of Omo uh, Ilesho uh, and the Olawalebakari bandits who are being held a uh, bit legally, a bit in violation of, uh, of the order of release warrant uh, made by my Lord Honorable Justice uh, Ijoma Ujuku at the Federal High Court. And uh, we, we used to say some things well, far back then when we were in the law faculty that uh, it's, a, it's a maxim of Roman jurisprudence that when guns boom, the laws keep silent. In a way, uh, the regime in power today, uh, in trying to withdraw all the pillars of rule of law, is inviting nothing else than anarchy on, the, on this society. And that's just a real fact. Where laws are, uh, are the pillars of our legal system and the pillars of rule of law are being uprooted, then what you have is the escalating trend and uh, drift to anarchy and, uh, and uh, you know, I mean, for me, I'm, I'm still asking the same question. Mm. How difficult can it be to explain to a, a group of people whose leader you have in your custody what the man's crime is and why it's taken so long for him to be taken to court and for him to be jailed if he is guilty of any of these? I, I mean, uh, okay, how, okay, to how be difficult more, to is be more it? Specific, to be more specific anyway, you recall that in the case of Ezakizaki, he was denied bail. Uh, of course, the offences with which he was charged are uh, bailable, but in the possibly in the discretion of the court, he was denied bail. Then his counsel made an application for uh, him to be released for medical attention. And after a lot of uh, coming back and forth, the application was granted, and then he went to India and all of that. Now, despite that, there are, despite the fact that there is testimony to the fact that is in a critical medical condition. There's no attempt whatsoever to, to, to release him. Now, we are, we are also look at, I've also stated here that one of the pillars of the rule of law is that you should, the question of uh, fundamental rights vis-a-vis -vis the question of how those rights are protected are very key. What I, mean, what I mean by that is that there should be no criminalization of the exercise of fundamental rights. If exactly today is exercising or his followers are exercising their rights to peaceful assembly, their rights to associate freely, their rights to religion, then the state must not criminalize those, uh, those rights. But that, but that but is what that is, is happening now. Now we have a situation where the rule of law is said, if you mean student, he said, we have a situation where, uh, as I've said earlier, constitutionalism. Is being stood on his head. You have a situation where even compliance with court orders, uh, all the known uh, tenants of democracy everywhere in the world, is being stood on his head in Nigeria. And the result is what we are seeing uh, today. The pictures we have, uh, the videos we have seen of clashes with the police and all of that. It's just a foretaste of um, of more things to come. Mm. Uh, um, before you got here, um, Ugo was saying that um, the last time a person was killed as a result of a man who was going about his business covering the protests was killed. Mm -hmm. Nothing has really been said about that. That no, no. situation 
has gone cold. Mm. And now we have a young girl coming home from school, killed by a stray bullet yes. of a trigger-happy police officer. And of course, I'm sure we will scream about it for a few days and then it will go cold. Yeah. So what you're telling me is the law has no power any longer. So where do people go to get justice in Nigeria? Well, well the, the, the main battle for us as lawyers and as uh, members of the Nigerian Bar Association now, is for us to stand up to this escalating trend of uh, dictatorship and totalitarianism, if you ask me. Because the reality is that, as you have said, we now have the killings, the last killing, and then we have a, a disturbing rise in repression. Apart from the repression of those Ezekizaki uh, followers, the Shites, there's also the repression of even the Occupy National Assembly uh, protests. They protest to National Assembly this many uh, against the social media B and the SP uh, SP B. The police equally uh, broke up their protests, and many people were also uh, arrested as we speak in places like Enugu State and other part of the country where we have. So we are having this kind of situation where we have entered into a a situation where the state that has the as has uh, had democratic rights of ransom will be confronted by mass rebellion. And it's a disturbing situation. And now the poor girl that has died, of course, there is no social security system in the country. There is no guarantee of uh, even of, of the right to life. There is no, and most police brutality cases are not even, uh, uh, you know, attended to. The last person that died was a police officer. To date, we don't know what the fate of his family members and children are to date. So it's, it's quite a disturbing situation. Ugo, mm. he just painted a bleak picture. Mm. Look, it's, it's tough for me to ask this question, but what are we going to do? Because it, it, if this is happening and people are being repressed, and we see those people that we just saw in those, in, in those clips yeah. are not going to back down anytime soon. If it seems like we're gagging people or stopping protests in Nigeria, then could it be that we, we, we've lost it yeah. on, the, on the grounds of democracy? We probably don't have a democracy anymore. We don't have a Is that the case? We don't have a democracy in Nigeria at the moment. All right, I'm sorry. But, but, but we had elections. It's a democracy. Oh, no, no, we didn't, we didn't. What, what we had was a sham election. It wasn't an election. Election people died and people were killed. But the Independent anyhow. National Electoral Commission well, did that, say that Anik, elections I, I, were free, fair, and Anik, credible. What Anik, are you talking Anik about? Anik is the biggest disgrace of the 21st century. Anybody can quote me anywhere. And the leadership of the INEC, if this is a serious... Are you trying if, to say this, that no election is, that took no, place no, in 2019 was credible whatsoever? If example, you set an example for yourself, that you ask yourself that six questions. Your teacher asks you a question in the exam hall, that six questions. And out of that six, you're able to score two of that six. Did you pass? So there's no way you pass. If we had like a semblance of peaceful election in some states, in a couple of few states, all right, and you have that six state, and in that that six... 30, 30 was rigged, and there was a high, high incident of election, uh, thuggery, violence, people were killed, uh, ballot boxes were snatched. It doesn't make sense, all right? Election is key for democracy, and if the election is not, it's not free and fair, it, not, it doesn't make any sense, all right? We also saw what happened in Kogi State. People were killed. A woman was burnt to death because she was doing her job. And up to this moment, nothing has been done. I know the saddest thing about it, the wife of the president, the wife of the president and the wife of the vice president went to Kogi State to go and dance and jubilate. Few days after, some women, I don't know who they are, gave the wife of the president an award. Whereas a woman was killed after an election, a woman was doing her job and nobody has said anything. So the thing is not about, it's not about, it's not about the presidency of anybody, it's about us as a people. We're not serious people in this country. And I'm being serious about when I serious company, we, we think that because of where we are, we are divorced from the realities of Nigeria. No, we are not. Because we feel like you're powerful, you're rich, or you're, you're super. You know, you, you can organize a sham award for the wife of the president that, that provides the sham election that killed a fellow woman. And you, people will clap for you and they sing and drink cocktail in Abuja and wherever they stay. It does not make sense. And bring it back to Lagos. What is happening? People are not going to vote. People don't come out to vote because they come out, they die, they don't. What happened in the Lagos? We saw the same thing. People couldn't come out to vote in our court and rest of them. What is happening? Now, the same NURTW that, that, they, that they used to read the election every other thing are, being, are playing a key role now. For mm. you to move your uh, go car the bike killing, they have to pay them for them to move. So what are we saying? What we're doing in Nigeria as it is at the moment does not help anybody. In semblance of democracy itself and the governance proper, it doesn't. So 
what is happening with the, with the sh uh, shy, like, sh like he said, is going to continue. That cycle of violence will continue. What will stop it? I don't know. Because last time I was there, I was telling them about, about our show. Where it's not about show. Where, right? I'm not his biggest fan. I don't like him. Right? But I'm saying the, the truth is the truth. All right? But the truth is that he's not my friend. So I don't have any sh special love for him. But he's a human being. I respect in closing, that. In closing. But in, in closing, the truth is this. If we are going to ask self questions, we need to stand up. The the Nigeria Bar Association, what are they doing? Last time we had the brave new bar, it was nonsense, all right? Because the vice president is a lawyer, people are not saying anything. But how can you be a lawyer? You, you are a senior advocate of Nigeria, and you are, you are with an administration mm -hmm. that has, that is known to disobey constantly the, the law of the country. So it is a shame on him being the vice president and being a pastor and being a lawyer that he cannot speak the truth. Well, Lady Christian says, you know, Esther, maybe this is a, there's an appointed time for you. If you're not going to speak up, maybe someone will speak up. Well, uh, it's an interesting conversation. We need to take a break. My guests are not going anywhere. We'll come back after the break to discuss the alleged foreign sponsor of Boko Haram. You want to hear this. Stay with us.